minutes last night in a prime time special. The first of several hearings by the January 6th commission was held and for the first time we saw unseen footage of the insurrection and heard powerful testimony and here to talk about that with me is Senator Jack Reed. Thank you so much Thank for being you. with us. So we want to start with just your overall reaction to the hearing last night. There was powerful testimony mm -hmm. like we mentioned that video. What were the powerful moments to you? What do you think people walked away with? Well, I think the, the powerful moments we were actually seeing, as I saw up close on January 6th, uh, the mob attacking police officers, uh, harming police officers, several unfortunately passed away, and that it was not to be confused with a peaceful demonstration. It was a violent attack against the Constitution of the United States. And that came through. I think also what was very compelling was the testimony or the statements of both Chairman Thompson and particularly uh, Vice Chairman uh, Liz Cheney, who spoke in very measured terms, very credible, very compelling, based on fact, not fancy, and uh, disturbing because it suggests very strongly that the president was completely aware that his statements were false. His attorney general, Bill Barr, told him that. Right. And that he still manufactured this uh, this whole event, and that is the most uh, the disturbing aspect. And so, overall, what would you say was the purpose of the hearing? You know, some people are questioning: Well, is prosecution of the former president on you know tap potentially uh, as a result of this, or you know? Is this just to clear up the public record for what actually took place that day? What do you think overall the end goal is for this? The end goal is simply to establish the truth. Uh, there's been a concerted effort beginning before the election to say, you know, the president said multiple times, if I lose this election, it's because it was stolen, it was rigged, etc. And then from the day of the election forward until January 6th, it was a, an elaborate, it looks like, scheme to produce this stolen election uh, theory. That's false. And Congress has a responsibility to establish what was true, and then based on those facts, not conjectures or propaganda based on those facts, uh, take whatever action is appropriate. Right, and so we, you might have touched on this already, but just the images, the video that we hadn't seen before, all the testimony, even from mm -hmm. Ivanka herself, all of these things, how did they play a role in pointing to the truth, like you just mentioned, like that was the end goal? Well, uh, you know, it was very clear from last evening that uh, the Attorney General of the United States told him the election was not stolen and he disregarded them. One of his campaign lawyers told Mark Meadows, the, we've looked everywhere, no, this is a President Biden won. And in fact, so Meadows' comment was, so there's no there there, right? And yes, that's the truth. Yet Meadows, the President, and others continue to manufacture this lie. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, he's, he's, he told the crowd, you know, they stole the election, go on, steal it, et cetera. Um, that type of untruth and um, abuse of power cannot be tolerated in a democracy. Absolutely. So I want to switch gears a little bit and talk mm -hmm. about the gun legislation that was actually just passed right. in the House Judiciary here in Rhode Island. I mean, do you feel like it is past time or time to just implement gun reform here in Rhode Island or across the country? Oh, I think it's time. You know, we've taken steps in the past from 1994 to uh, 2004, assault weapons uh, were illegal, many of them. There were some minor exceptions, but many of them. And uh, that would make a difference today. Uh, large scale magazines, uh, hunters and target shooters and other folks like that, you know, they're not going to need, you know, 60 rounds to take out a, you know, a animal they're illegally hunting for. Uh, you know, I served in the Army for 12 years. I carried an M16. It's designed to kill people. That's what it's designed for. Uh, and I think we have to recognize that. I think we have to close up our, the background checks so that they're thorough. I mean, some of these incidents, an 18-year-old walks in, buys a semi-automatic weapon, f fiddles with it for a minute, it's fully automatic, and goes to a, a shopping center and kills people. Another one goes to a school. Uh, you know, there is a mental health component of this, but we have to do more, uh, not just on one phase, but both. Sensible gun regulations, and if you look at other places around the world, they don't have these same types of mass shootings because they have a different culture, a different constitution. I understand that, 
But you know, one factor is missing is they don't have the proliferation of weapons. But the mental health problem is also uh, important, and we should do that. Right, and just sticking with that mental health uh, topic right there, you helped craft the uh, suicide prevention yes. line here. Can you just talk to us briefly about what that is? Great. Uh, well, we have a number coming in in July that you can call 988. 988. And for people in distress, in fact, everybody, if you're looking for you know, emer emergency assistance, trying to remember a seven digit telephone number doesn't work. 988. And you'll be connected to local mental health advices. So it's not someone from way away, it's someone that might even know your neighborhood and where to go, has a contact with local law enforcement or local health care workers. Uh, military personnel who use 988 will be able to be automatically linked to the military assistance hotline, where there you have people trained particularly to deal with service members. In fact, the head of the VA estimated that this current line uh, with 700,000 calls, uh, a year, within a year we'll have over a million, 1.7. Because mm -hmm. he knows, and they're staffing up, because he knows 988 will be more effective. Well, that is very impactful things that would be coming to our state. Thank you for Thank you. sharing all of this with us and joining us here at 4.